Right, so when you're putting the harness, basically you want to do, you've got a clicking system, so that it clicks in like that. You're going to push it into it like that, hear the click, and then you're tightening. If you just tighten forward like that, you don't get enough pressure. So what you need to do is you use like a ratchet system, you pull back and tighten. So you basically do it like that. You want to tighten from both sides so that your harness doesn't go off center. So when you're tightening, tighten from your left and your right. And it's there. This is the waist harness. You guys are going to use a seat harness so this doesn't go between the legs. As you progress in kiting, you progress onto a waist harness. It can give you too much of a, a, a pull from above. So as a beginner, you want to have the leg straps to keep the harness down on you. But ultimately, this is a more comfortable harness. So what you've got in the harness, you've got the spreader bar, which is this, which connects, and you've got, this is your safety leash, which is connects onto the kite. When you're not using the safety leash, what we tend to do with it, just click it onto the middle over there, so it's nice and out the way. One of the biggest things I want to try and teach you today, girls, and this is probably the most important thing that you can take out of the lesson, is your harness. Everything revolves around the harness in kiting, and this is the hardest thing for us to teach. The harness is what holds your kite, and you are there to steer the kite. The problem that we've got in kiting, and this is what I've got to try and teach you guys not to do, is that instinctively you use your hands. Now what you've got is, this is your chicken loop. Your chicken loop connects onto your harness over here. This is your spreader bar. So what you've got over here, this is your safety leash. Your safety leash is going to connect onto your chicken loop on that little loop over there. So what we do is, we just, if you have a look over here, it's just got a little thing over there. Boom, goes into it like that. The chicken loop goes in, and this is your pee, pee over there. That slots in behind. So if you have a look, there's a hole over here. So it goes in there and it slots in behind it, so it prevents it from coming unhooked. So it's like that. This is what holds your kite. And what you've got is you've got your control bar. Your control bar goes up and down, but what you've got in your control bar is the side lines of your control bar connect to the back of your kite. The center line of your control bar connects to the front, so as you pull the bar in, it pulls the back of the kite in, and it powers the kite up. As you relax your bar out, it depowers. Your safety is actually up the top third over here. So as you pull the bar in and out, you can actually control the amount of power you're doing. We're going to start practicing that. But the power of the kite always goes straight through to your harness. It never bends. If you bend it like that, it means you have more power in your hands than you have on the harness. And I want the power to be on the harness. Your hands should be relaxed just to be able to pull left and right. Because now watch, what you've got, your control bar is color coordinated. Okay, you've got a red and you've got a, on this one a blue. Often it's a green, but you generally always have a red. So when you're pulling, if you want to pull left or right, you're going to pull like this, okay? But what you have to make sure is your red is never ever on the right hand side. Don't associate the R and the R, red's not right. Another way of doing it is port, it's a, it's a sailing one, your red's your port side. Port side, if you drink too much port, the drink port, it, you're going to come left. Port's red, if you drink too much port, you're going to come left, port, left, okay? So red's not right. Never ever have the red on the right hand side. Very important. First thing you ever do before you launch a kite, make sure the red's in the left hand. Okay, so it's there. So to pull right, you're gonna pull your right hand. So grab your right hand on the bar and pull right. That's your turn that you're gonna do. But if you're holding with the other hand, pull right now. You see, you can't turn it because this hand stops the bar from turning. And what's gonna happen then, you're gonna twist the bar to try and get it to go. So the whole thing is you gotta relax your other hands here, guys, because if you don't, you can't turn the kite. So guys, your first form of safety with kiting is just let go. And that's what's amazing with the new kites. Guys always say, well, cool, you know, old kites versus new kites. In the old days, if you let the kite go, it didn't make a difference. The kite carried on dragging you. Here, the kite depowers 80%. So all you have to do is open your hands. The problem is, is if something goes wrong, your natural reaction is to pull. And you pull the bar in and power the kite up. So Because your power is down here and your depower is up there. Your natural reaction when you pull the bar in, you're actually making the situation worse. So trying to get into habit from the beginning of if something goes wrong, just open your hands. The bar will run away from you. Your kite, just so you know, won't just go up and sit above your head and wait for you. It will go wherever it was going. So if it was crashing into the sand or into the water, it will carry on doing so. If it was flying straight across the zone, it will carry on doing so. But it will do so depowered. And there'll be a lot less wear and tear on your equipment with a kite smashing and instead of it smashing and fully powered, it's got a lot of power dumped. If you're still in trouble, you've got another form of safety over here, which is your big red thing over here. And all you need to do is you're gonna grab that and you're gonna push it and release. Push and release. Push, grab that and push, and let go. Oh, okay. And the kite goes onto that. 
Guys, if you pull a quick release, you're in trouble. Let go of the car. And the car goes onto its safety line. Then you connect it to the car via your safety. Now this is mainly so that once you've pulled your safety, you, you still are connected to your kite. The newer system is a better system because it flags the kite onto a single line so it opens it up and spills the power. Some of the older systems still will have amount of power. So your kite can still have about 10% of the power, but enough to actually drag you out to sea. So if you're flying in a cross offshore, which we said to you not to fly in a cross offshore because it's blowing you away from the shore, if the kite's blowing you and blowing and eventually it's the stage, well, you're not going to make it back to shore. You've got to be able to release the kite. So you've got another form of safety, which is this. You grab the red one and you push it and you release it. If you release your kite, swim back to shore, let NSRI know that you, you've released it because if, your, if someone finds your kite floating around out to sea, they're going to send out a search party looking for you. So it is advisable to phone NSRI and actually just let them know that you are okay. This safety here, I've pulled this about five times in the last 20 years. Of the five times I've pulled it, four of them was because of the surf. So the main reason I've pulled this is just to open the kite up in the surf. Generally, by just releasing the bar, you've got enough to depower your kite uh, and, and actually get yourself out of trouble. To reconnect this, you have to push it up. You use your finger to pull it down and it reinserts into it over here. Right. To reconnect your safety line over here, if you have a look, so it goes there, pushes through, in, and over, like that, and it can connect back on there. Just so you are also aware, on your harness, most harnesses, you've got a knife over here, if you have a look, it's a little hook knife, you can actually use this to grab and hook the lines, but it connects them back, make sure it's inserted in properly and the Velcro is secure. A lot of these things fall out, so it is important that you actually shove it in properly. Right, so that comes to the end of, of just how to set up your kite and, and run your lines, but now please don't put a kite up without further instruction. There's nothing that will teach you. You cannot learn via video the whole lot. There's nothing takes uh, preference over actually flying a kite, and things can go wrong and go wrong very quickly.